on behalf of on behalf of all faculty members staff members students and the entire i am rohtak community i extend a warm welcome to his holiness dalai lama sir it's an indeed a great honor and a privilege to have you and host you in our community and to talk about uh, a very important topic of facing challenges through passion and wisdom as all of us know in the last decade we have found ourselves in more strife than ever before in our life on one end we have multiple facilities challenges comforts available to us and yet we face challenges of time challenges of having quality discussions challenges of having better quality of life i do not know whether technological innovations mobile communication and computing devices have made our lives better or worse in addition at a global level conflict conflict between countries conflict between people has only grown and at the same time the 180 degree there is a great degree of sense of entitlement and feeling of victimhood on rise so while we have a section of society which is deprived and is suffering is conflicted and is facing strife there is another section of society which has all the comforts available to them and yet are feeling a sense of victimization this conflict in society where the underprivileged the suffering the people who have deprivation do not see any high level of uh, of of compassion or tolerance or some comfort on the other hand we have people who are living comfortable lives and yet have a sense of entitlement and this is a dilemma that we are experiencing today i hope and pray that through the words of his holiness we would be able to enrich our lives if not at least we would be able to ameliorate ourselves if not we will at least start thinking differently about the way we see the world i would like to welcome again his holiness to our community we're really delighted and honored sir thank you very much thank you on behalf of all our faculty students staff and community members welcome sir so indeed i extremely happy uh, having this opportunity to talk my indian friend india uh two most most populated nation china india now india thousand years the your tradition of ahimsa uh with karuna so one or say the uh, sufficient reason we can see india this country all major world religious tradition live together the concept of non violence all major world religious tradition live together here uh, so india's 1000 year old and they tolerant 
ahimsa and karuna. So uh, now you already uh, have the or say tradition or even practice. The religious tolerance very much exists here. Sometimes few people create some problem. That's understandable. But basically, this country, thousand year old tradition on the basis of ahimsa, religious harmony, very good, very good. So now, last few decades, decade, uh, Marwe, Lochutra, few decades, India is my home. I really impressed India, people of India, including religious leader, thousand-year-old your tradition. Ahimsa, still very much uh, alive, kept. So I, uh, uh, I always say telling people, religious, harm <coughs> religious harmony possible. India is example. All major world institutions live together. Among the scholar, uh, some philosophical views, some more complicated sort of matter, some uh, the scholar level, some debate over a thousand years. <coughs> but basically, among uh, the people from different religious traditions, uh, no problem. So uh, I believe <coughs> <coughs> India can make significant contribution on this planet, religious harmony. <laughs> and then uh, since I came here one way as a refugee one way the guest of Indian government <coughs> I very much impressed religious harmony when I talk religious harmony, I always mention India is example, living example. So now, uh, oh. Now India, modern India, uh, in education field, people, too much emphasis, materialistic life, uh, and science and these things. Uh, now we must pay, we must pay more attention in education. Uh, a thousand year old tradition, ahimsa, karuna, uh, on a secular basis, uh, the Indian school, university, uh, I hope uh, must pay more attention. Thousand year old India's tradition. 
Now this should be a living, living tradition. And I always say, in the previous century, Mahatma Gandhiji start ahimsa. Uh, he practiced ahimsa in the freedom struggle. Then later, many people in South Africa uh, uh, and I say many country really follow uh, Mahatma Gandhiji's non-violent I say struggle. Now, time come. Since world uh, lacking moral principle, uh, uh, India have the potential to offer world uh, Karuna. Uh, himself, Mahatma Gandhi propagate. Now, on top of that, uh, modern India. Uh, should pay more attention about Karuna. Uh, firstly, in our own uh, younger generation, uh, among the student, uh, the strictly secular way, nothing to do with religion, but the warm-heartedness, uh, religion uh, is respective, whether believer or non-believer, believe this religion, that religion. Since we are all human beings, we all come from our mother, we all grown up with mother's affection. That is basic human nature. So therefore, now, mm, in Indian uh, education, uh, pay some attention about karuna, uh, not based on religion, but simply human nature. And we can see uh, through centuries, a lot of world problem of fighting and spent a lot of money making weapon. These are materialistic sort of thinking. Now India, uh, we should uh, revive our own thousand year old tradition. Ahimsa Karuna. So in education, uh, we should, uh, I often use it telling the modern Indian education should combine uh, modern education, including science, and thousand year old your own tradition, Karuna, Ahimsa. This, you see, India have potential to combine these two things. So as now India, my home, I notice India still have these potential. Now, uh, should make effort. I'm going, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, 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 next to my visit, uh, Delhi, I'm going to thinking, meeting some professors of Jawaharlal or Nehru University, so on. Uh, 
I'm going to discuss how to combine modern education, knowledge, including science, these things, and then India's moral principle, ahimsa, karuna. So, uh, while I, as a refugee, uh, as I already mentioned, as a guest of Indian government, I really see great potential of India's tradition. Uh, ahimsa combined uh, karuna. Now, uh, last, you see, few decades, I have uh, many opportunity to discuss with brain specialist or scientist. Uh, they really appreciate uh, uh, loving kindness uh, that really uh, create mental the brain some special sort of way. Uh, often you see anger or uh, fear very bad for our brain. So uh, number of scientists now really showing interest how to keep peace of mind. That really affect our body, our society. And in order to build peaceful world, happy world, the weapon, a mere knowledge, I say, uh, no effect, really, karuna. That also, you see, human nature, we are more compassionate animal, not like tiger, other animal. We human being, by nature, uh, more compassionate. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, India can combine ancient Indian knowledge, karuna, and modern, edu modern education combine these two things in modern way, secular way. <coughs> so now some questions. We have uh, lots of questions uh, will uh, follow in order. A lot of people want to ask. Uh, His Holiness, uh, so, so many questions. We can, uh, I think uh, <clears throat> you have mentioned something very important about science and technology. You know, we often talk about scientific temper that students in an educational institution must have scientific temper. However, Many of the old institutions of education had religious spaces. If you would see the first few universities in India, in Nalanda and Takshila, the pursuit of God itself was good enough reason for studying something. They were pursuing God. There were theological uh, studies as part. But in recent times, People feel that if you are scientific, you cannot be religious. This divorce between science and religion is very conflicting. Can science and religion go together? As I already <coughs> mentioned, uh, this country 
all world religion exist here. So uh, we kept essence of all religion. That's Karuna. In the philosophical field, there are different views. Uh, that is a method to keep Karuna. Uh, in some cases, the religious belief is helping to strengthen Karuna. But you see, uh, religion is religion. Now, India, we already have the concept of secular without touching religion. So, uh, religion should be a method to further promote karuna. Sometimes, instead of that, religion bring the concept of we and they and conflict. That is quite sad. Now we should. Uh, uh, yes, Zolinas, we lost sound uh, completely on this side. Uh, now, 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 India, India, India. Yeah. Yeah. religious uh, belief very strong, and uh, religious harmony already there. Now, we should uh, pay more attention in our education field the, about the essence of dharma, karuna, compassion, universal uh, compassion. Uh, otherwise, you see, we already have these things. Thank you, His Holiness. Our next question is from our Dean Academic. Thank you, Your Holiness. We find new generation has a sense of entitlement as they are generation of resources. My question is, is it wise to be continuously demanding from everyone? Now, 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 oh, you see, uh, extreme desire, and I want this, I want that. Uh, that's, I think, mm, due to short sighted. We should think about the world, and our aim, our goal, a peaceful world in order to create a peaceful world, we must pay more attention about karuna. So peaceful karuna, peaceful I mean, world with karuna. Uh, these are the, the short-sighted. Short I think, I think, we, think we, can, we, can, we can reduce this uh, without proper reason, too much desire, I want this, I want that. These are short-sighted, I feel. I feel like that, okay. I think uh, this is a very interesting thought. I think it is probably useful to focus on uh, things that you don't need, then things that you need. 
uh, it is a wonderful thing. I think if people start thinking about what they can give up rather than what they want, I think it will be a fantastic world and there can be more karuna and more compassion. Uh, giving up, I think, is, is probably uh, something for our new generation to consider. So our next question is from Professor S.K. Pandey, who is our Dean Research. Oh. Uh, as I already mentioned, we have too much materialistic thinking and short sighted. Oh. Not deeper level. So, India's uh, the thousand year old tradition, Karuna, Ahimsa, is actually part of human nature. Uh, we human beings, from mother, uh, the, our end, the beginning of our life, full of compassion. So now that uh, should be more attention. Uh, and as now already mentioned, now a number of scientists also now uh, believe peace of mind is very important for individual, for community, for nation, even the whole world. Uh, so now, uh, uh, more compassionate mind, uh, as I already mentioned, in education field, we should pay more attention about Karuna as a religion, but for our health, for happy society, happy family, uh, ultimately a peaceful world, compassionate world. I think we can do uh, through education not through religion. Simply, we are human, this world, we human beings, world. So, the very purpose of we human beings, not killing each other, uh, we should uh, have more sense of community, sense of oneness, of human being. I totally committed. I am trying to promote the sense of oneness of seven billion human beings. This world, we have to live together. So different nationality, different color, different religion, these are secondary. Mostly important, we human beings. We, sh we should live happily, peacefully. <coughs> then religion is the personal matter. Okay? Thank you. Yes, as I already, um, yes, I already mentioned, you see, in a materialistic life, and I think I may say the education has come from the West, uh, the West, they believe God, so we all uh, creation of God, 
so animals for human consumption. Almost that kind of thinking. Isn't that the habit? But now in India, uh, we have something uh, different view. All living beings, uh, including animal, uh, in insect, we always avoid not kill, not kill. So basically, India already have thousand year old tradition of Karuna Ahimsa. And this very relevant to this world. In what as I mentioned, in order to develop happy world, peaceful world, the India's thousand year old tradition, Karuna Ahimsa, these two things are very important. Okay, now next. Unmute your computer, please. I think. Uh, I think uh, we human being in certain period we too much pay uh, material uh, technology and these things now gradually we realize inner peace is very important so therefore now uh, according our reality, things are now changing. Now there is real hope. We really can develop peaceful world, compassionate world. That I that believe. I Table. Everybody's on the mobile phones. Uh, where is uh, what is the future of human interaction in such a situation? Everybody is continuously using mobile, continuously on the phone, uh, having interactions through the phone uh, without even looking at the other person. Where do you see our world going with all of this? Yes, I yes, think. I think. I think. Uh, in past, we just thinking about material uh, value. And then too much competition, these things come. Now gradually, people realize inner peace very important. And oneness of seven billion human beings. Uh, we have to live together on this planet. Uh, so, we seven billion human beings, uh, we have to live together on this small planet and harmoniously, peacefully. If we think realistic way, that's the only way. So I think things are changing. Things are changing. Now, in recent years, people too much emphasis their own nationality or their own country. Now things are changing. Things are changing. One example, former Soviet Union. Uh, gradually now changing. And most of these 
Southeast Asian nations. Uh, in the past, you see, too much fighting. Now things are changing. One example, now People's Republic of China and Taiwan. Now things are, you see, the, uh, it is or say the unrealistic keep or, or say the, uh, attitude as an enemy is outdated. Now we should, uh, I myself, you see, uh, since many years, I committed middle wave approach with Tibetan and the People's Republic of China we have to live together. So no use to fight, kill. So uh, now basically we really need in order to create happy world, we should develop oneness of seven billion human beings and a peaceful world. That is our aim. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Prachi Kumar, our MBA student, has a question for you, sir. Um, hello, Your Holiness. Uh, my question is that in the times of increasing competition and a continuous race to the top, do you think that compassion and desire for material success can coexist at the organizational level? As I mentioned already uh, in previous uh, our generation, is it too much thinking about materialistic life? Uh, now, gradually, uh, more and more people paying more attention about inner peace uh, and basically uh, thinking. Peaceful world. Uh, now climate condition, that also uh, telling us we should, uh, we should take care about climate as a one human community. The climate, whole world facing. So different nation, different country, different continent is secondary. Important is basic human uh, life, human happiness. So now the reality really much changed. Uh, and then previous sort of situation. So therefore, uh, I'm really hopeful uh, with this reality, now we should uh, pay more attention about oneness of human being and we should be uh, more, more compassionate, compassionate, more compassionate uh, human society uh, through education, uh, strictly secular way. Okay, so India have the great potential to make a significant contribution and uh, example in the eyes of humanity. 
Okay. So the next question is from our uh, uh, BBMBA integrated program, Narsan Boro. Thank you, sir. So my question to your holiness is, there is an increasing conflict between people at personal and organizational level. How do you think people learn to accommodate and reduce conflict? Uh, actually, <clears throat> as I mentioned, in the past, now, for example, First World War, Second World War, like that. And then gradually, uh, United Nations developed. And then particularly, European Union, you see, developed. According to the reality, now we have to live together. So much better, uh, peaceful way. So I really admire the European Union. And Arjuna and uh, De Gaulle. De Gaulle. Previously, France, Germany, the arch enemy. But in new circumstances, uh, they develop this European Union, wonderful. So now, uh, Latin America and Africa now should think more, un more union. Uh, just one's own nation, one's own continent. Uh, the reality uh, not isolated, everything interdependent. So now we really need a sense of oneness of humanity. So now uh, people, as I mentioned earlier, European Union, one example, and then the United Nations also, you see, one example. So. I always optimistic uh, and on top of was the global problem. You see the uh, sense of oneness and we have to live together. You see that more realistic thinking. So I more, more optimistic. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes, sir. The next question is from one of our staff members, uh, Gunit Sethi. Thank you, sir. Your Holiness, my question to you is, how important is the role of workshops and seminars for mental fitness and coordination relations in the work organization to ensure harmony and coordination among the workforce? Now, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, education, more education, wider perspective, uh, and realistic long term interest. So, uh, uh, beside school and people, from time to time, you see. Uh, discuss and also I think media have special role to promote basic human value not thinking my nation my country uh, now things are changing so I'm quite hopeful now things are because of the uh, reality is uh, we have to think more broad way, not narrow-minded thinking. My nation, 
my community. And uh, like a political party, my party. <laughs> you see, too much so small thinking. So this, I think now, the reality tell us now we have to think a broad way and ultimately we should build happy one world, happy humanity. Okay. So now our student from our law program, uh, Ridhima Singh. Thank you, sir. My question to your holiness is, Westerners say survival of the fittest is the norm of the society. Does that mean that there is no room for weak and underprivileged? Oh, uh, Darwin uh, belongs old generation. So they are thinking according to their time sort of the situation. Now, th since Darwin come, uh, things uh, much change. So now we, time come, we have to think uh, uh, oneness of all seven billion human beings. We have to live together happily without any fighting, competition. That's my belief. Okay. So it is so, um, uh, today this, this conflict continues to, to persist. Um, you know, even in educational institutions, we say work hard, the fittest, the best, um, there is very little room uh, for, you know, in that sense, uh, all sorts of people. Even from a global sense, if we see cities, even cities have started look, looking identical. They will all have a downtown, they'll all have a city hall or sort of a thing. Uh, there is a greater degree of this forced, identical, uh, everybody's expected to behave in a particular manner. This is really reducing, in my view, uh, diversity, the diverseness of the, of the universe. Sir. How do we overcome this? As I <coughs> already mentioned, now according to reality, we have to think about community, uh, about continent, uh, no longer thinking my own country my own community. So now, according to the reality, uh, we have to think more broad way, not narrow-minded. So the sense of competition among ourselves, these are, you see, according to the particular circumstances, now that circumstances already, you see, changed. So now uh, we have to think, as I mentioned earlier, uh, oneness of all seven billion human beings. We have to live together. Uh, and our aim, we should pray, uh, we should try to create happy world, one world, happy one world. Okay. So next question is uh, from Siraj Gandhi, our MBA student. Thank you, sir. My question to your holiness is, what do you think is the impact of COVID-19 on organizations talking about the ethicality of employees? While some organizations are very compassionate, others were acting like scavengers. How does one deal with such dichotomy in society? Oh, hum in human history, 
you see, uh, people thinking more broad way, but at the same time, some smaller group of people always think their own short-sighted interest. So now, today also, uh, uh, some small number who just think themselves. Now, uh, as I already mentioned, <coughs> and media are uh, very important role. Things, I think, uh, some uh, some human being who live another uh, satellite uh, or world uh, uh, after a few decades come back here, they certainly notice much change. Our thinking much change, much broad, helping each other. That's what I believe. So now, this uh, illness, uh, doctors, uh, nurses, and uh, various sort of what organization really taking care, wonderful. Uh, so sometimes, you see, our life, everything uh, go well. Then we just uh, relax. When things more serious, then thinking more serious. So this illness also now bring us to think more serious and uh, combine like that. Okay. Yes. So next question is Chelsea. Chelsea Moria, our uh, integrated program student. Chelsea. Thank you, sir. My question to your holiness is, personal ethics influence how a person will act in an organization. The culture of an organization is strongly affected by the people who are in a position to establish its ethical values. Can you please share your views on this? Now, oh, we, as I already mentioned, you see, uh, last, you see, few or decades, I think our thinking much change. So uh, now they are thinking uh, for common interest uh, is really much grow. Uh, although the, in the past, the very idea of socialism, uh, all these thinking about people. Uh, as I already mentioned, now even nation uh, thinking, oneness, so European Union, things like that. So these are really hopeful signs. Uh, uh. Your, um, His Holiness, uh, proud that you said in the beginning that you've been here in India for so many decades and you call yourself um, son of India. We're really proud of that. Even though you were born in Tibet, you call yourself son of India. Uh, you know, why is it that you call yourself son of India? We are so proud of it, but we want to hear it from you as to why do you call yourself son of India? I think uh, comparison, broadly speaking, I think much change. 
we human being Yes, now, oh, I born in Tibet, Tibetan culture, oh, very much based on uh, Buddhism, particularly uh, the Nalanda tradition. So, uh, from my childhood, I study important texts, all wrote by Indian master. So then, uh, they due to political difficulties. I become a refugee here. I'm the guest of Indian government. Oh, I really enjoy India's freedom, India's religious harmony, as I already mentioned. So I really feel proud to say I'm Indian. So, uh, and then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm longest guest of Indian government. Now I stay here as a guest of Indian government. And meantime, you see, I deeply feel I'm uh, uh, culturally that through many reasons, I really feel I'm Indian. Okay. We are honored, sir. We are, we are really honored that you consider, uh, uh, you know, being son of India. I've just last two questions, sir. Uh, the last question, the second last question to you, sir, from our institution, and I think to, from everybody who is, um, who is listening, is um, on human uh, care for non-humans. I mean, uh, very traditional system. Uh, we, in India, even took care of birds. In COVID time, there were people who were putting seeds out to, to birds because there was lockdown, people couldn't go out. That's a typical, but however, we are seeing less and less uh, in the world. Uh, how do you think India can lead the way in teaching the world that it's not just about the human race, it's about everybody, uh, which includes animals, plants, everybody. What is your message for them? Because <laughs> I already mentioned uh, many people, uh, I think including scientists, in the past just thinking or short-sighted, then you see they consider India uh, something backward. Now that way of thinking 
much changed uh, India's civilization is really impressive, uh, particularly uh, the science about mind, these things. So including uh, scientists, now more and more scientists pay more attention about our uh, inner value. So that's India's tradition. So now, uh, in the past, uh, just materialistic sort of thinking. Now that much change, thinking about mind, thinking about emotion. In that respect, India's culture really showing great significance and great potential. Okay. So our last question, uh, if you have any message to encourage, motivate our young Indian students, any message for them, how they can improve their lives, live life better? As I mentioned earlier, China, India, two most populated nations. And then this country, oh, whole these centuries, genuinely democratic sort of country and religious freedom. So oh, now more and more people really a show interest about Indian culture. So I really feel the uh, now younger generation of India now should think of these events the last few decades and should feel proud. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We are really honored, delighted, and blessed to have your kind presence. Uh, I will request you, sir, uh, to bless us all because your blessings will probably go a long way in enriching our lives and the way we think. Uh, Your His Holiness, it's been a wonderful interaction. We have learned so much. You have emphasized so many important messages for us, for the humanity. You have mentioned how India can show the way to rest of the world to live in harmony, to have a leadership role in the two important concepts of our thousands and thousands of years of history of Ahimsa and Karuna. Ahimsa and Karuna together in our culture can possibly show the world uh, a way of accommodation, a way of consideration, a way of compassion. You gave such wonderful example uh, of European Union where Germany and France could not see each other eye to eye and today they are friends. Change in attitude of people, I think, is one of the best ways that you have mentioned. If you change your attitude, you can change the direction of the life, and you can you can reduce conflict, and you can all live together. Uh, you have also mentioned such beautiful things about uh, consideration for other individuals, not just themselves, but for the environment, but for other non-human beings for everybody on this planet to co coexist. And survival of fittest is, is probably an old way, as you have mentioned. Now it is to accommodate everybody, to consider everybody, to take everybody along and be a pluralistic, uh, uh, a very compassionate society. Thank you, sir. We all at I Am Rothak pay our humble respects to your divine presence. I also thank the organizing team 
all I am Rota community and thousands of people who are joining us today all across the world, listening to us. We're really grateful, sir. We're thankful. We seek your blessings. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much. I really uh, feel great honor, you see, to talk with Indian friends. Uh, as I already mentioned, I consider I'm son of India. Uh, now mentally, uh, I'm son of India, no question. Now physically also, I'm son of India. So I really extremely happy uh, have uh, exchange uh, our Indian uh, brothers, sisters. I really appreciate. Thank you. That's hard. That's hard. That's hard.